everybody, welcome back to Chiquelle's YouTube channel. My name is Amanda and I'm here today to bring you a review of the wig that is on my head. But before I do, make sure you go ahead, like this post, subscribe to my channel so that you can learn about all things alternative hair. Okay, so what is on my head, you ask? Well, let me tell you, although you probably already saw it from the description on my YouTube video. <laughs> Anyways, this is called Dolce & Dolce 23 by Bella Tress and she is phenomenal. She is long. She is amazing. I really do love this piece for so many different reasons. So let me tell you all about her. All right. So in true Bella Tress fashion, she is made with their heat friendly synthetic fibers. So Bella Tress uses these fibers for all their synthetic pieces. They're one of my favorite um, heat friendly fibers. This is an extremely soft fiber. And sometimes if I'm being honest, it doesn't feel as soft on all of their pieces, but on this particular piece, which I've tried several of, I've always found it to be extremely soft, extremely buttery smooth, and just so nice. I also find that with Bella Tress's fibers over time, they don't get as, um, gummy feeling as other heat friendly fibers might they still do They're, they still do but they don't do it as quickly and as much i would say so beltress has definitely done a great job of their heat friendly fibers so when i say heat friendly fibers i mean that you can use heating tools on this fiber up to 350 degrees fahrenheit or 180 degrees celsius so anything like a hair straightener um, a blow dryer brush, a curling iron, a hot comb, any of those things, you're going to be just fine as long as you don't exceed those temperatures. In fact, a piece like Dolce & Dolce 23 needs heat. So any heat friendly fiber you have, you're going to find that it gets frizzy and frazzly and um, a little bit clumpy. And the only way to stop that from happening, or I guess not stop it, but um, revert it back to the way it was before is by using heat. And so on a piece like this one, that's nice and straight, you're going to find it's really easy to maintain straight heat friendly fibers because you don't need to really worry too much about taking out any of the style because something about synthetic fibers or heat synthetic fibers is that if you add heat to it, that's going to completely change it. So if this were a curly or a wavy wig and I added heat through it, it's going to completely take out the curl or the wave. But because this is a straight piece, I don't need to worry about taking out the style of it. It might take out some of these little flips and curves it has, but you'll easily be able to redo something like this just by using something like a hot air brush or a round brush with a blow dryer, letting it cool set, and you'll be able to get that back really easily. But in order to maintain these fibers, I definitely recommend adding heat to them on a regular basis so that you are constantly keeping up with that frizz that is inevitable with all heat friendly fibers. All right, one thing to note about this wig and truly about any long synthetic wig and really any long heat friendly synthetic wig is that it is going to tangle. It is going to mat, especially at the nape and against your back. There's kind of no way around it. It is going to happen no matter what you do to prevent it. You can use detangling spray. You can use um, silicone spray. You can comb it as much as you can. And no matter what, it's going to tangle. So I just want to throw that out there because if you are someone who is easily bothered by that, um, maybe a long synthetic piece isn't for you. If you want to avoid that, a long human hair piece would be better or get a shorter synthetic piece that isn't as likely to tangle. But if you are okay with, you know, going around with a wide tooth comb ever so often to get those clumps and tangles out, then this is perfect, but that is just something to know about synthetic fibers in general. Um, you just kind of have to stay on top of them throughout the day if you want them to be looking good. All right, let me tell you a little bit about the cap of this wig. I actually have another color of this on hand for you that I'll show you the cap of. It's exactly the same as the one I'm wearing, just in a different color. So this is the color Sangria here, which is a really beautiful 
wine red color. I actually talk about this color in one of my recent videos um, that mentions six Bellatress colors. So make sure you go back and watch that video because you can learn all about the color Sangria as well as the color that's on my head, which is Tres Leches Blonde. So this is a really nice neutral color, a neutral blonde color with some rooting. Um, but again, go back to that video where you can learn all about these two colors. So Dolce & Dolce 23 is going to have a lovely cap. It's going to have a full monofilament top. So this is where uh, you can part it anywhere you want. And it's going to give you the illusion of hair growth right from your scalp. Because these pieces are, or because these fibers are all hand knotted on top, it gives them free range of motion and it gives you that illusion of scalp. You're also going to have this lace front. It's just temple to temple though. So it's not extended into the ear tab. It's an open wefted cap. So really stretchy, breathable, ventilated. We do have some velvet ear tabs with metal stays in them. And the metal stays are in there to help keep that wig flush against your temples. So um, if you are familiar with full, waist, <laughs> full lace wigs, um, that's when the lace comes all the way down and they don't have the metal stays in the ear tabs, which makes it all floppy and flying everywhere, which means you have to glue it. These are glueless wigs, so you do not need to add any glue to these ear tabs because those metal stays are there to help keep it against your temples so it's not flapping all over the place. Um, it also has a velvet extended nape, so that means it's a thicker nape. And we have pull straps here, kind of like bra straps, to loosen or tighten your circumference. So I'm gonna put this one down and show you all of these features on the one on my head. So again, this is Tres Leches Blonde. I always love saying that. It makes me feel like I'm foreign. Tres Leches Blonde. All right, so here we have that lace front. For this color in particular, they have brought those lighter pieces forward to help make that knotting a little bit more um, disguised. The lighter the fibers are, the harder it is to see the knotting on this particular wig. And like I mentioned, this is not an extended lace front. It's only temple to temple. I have found sometimes on Bella Tress's temple to temple lace fronts that the transition from lace into the wefted cap is a little bit um, evident. So I have actually found more noticeable ones. This one's not as bad as some of the ones I've seen before. But sometimes that does bother me. It might be something that bothers you because if you do pull this back, you are going to see that direct line into your wefts. So I don't often pull it straight off my face because of that. Um, it's still one I kind of keep down and I try to disguise that by making sure my pieces are in front of it. So it is something that I am conscious of. Might be something that you should be conscious of or maybe you don't care about it. I don't know. Um, it does have a monofilament top. So again, that means you can part it wherever you'd like. It has a really lovely monofilament top. I don't find the knotting to be too large on it. Um, you still can see the knotting, but like I've mentioned many times before, the darker the color is, the more evident the knotting is. So you can fix that, or not, I shouldn't say fix it, but you can blur it out by dabbing a little bit of makeup in here um, and then brushing it out. And that's gonna help blur the knots a little bit, make it uh, transition a little bit more easily into your own skin. All right, let me give you the full view of this. So this is, in my opinion, a pretty light density piece. Um, I'll show you how light it is. I suppose I often find it to be telling of the density when I put it in a ponytail. This is clearly not a very natural ponytail I'm doing for you right now, but I just want to show you the density. So there's not a ton of hair in that ponytail. It's pretty light, um, very natural density with a lot of layering here. Um, so you'll notice that it's already getting a little bit tangled. So like I mentioned earlier in the video, you'll need to detangle it throughout the day. <laughs> but it's kind of worth it because it's a really beautiful wig. Ugh. Okay, here's the back, all these long layers. Um, so Dolce Dolce 23, that means that it's gonna be up to 23 inches long. So it is a long wig. So all of the exact lengths on this, um, the sides go up to 23 inches long, the back goes up to 23 inches long, 
And from the nape, so this part here, that's going to be 16 inches long. And overall, the pieces on here range anywhere between 15 inches to 23 inches long. Now, the wonderful thing about Dolce & Dolce 23 is that it comes in another cap option. This also comes in a hand-tied version, which is phenomenal. I like it way better than this one. And I do love this one, but the hand-tied version... Oh, Bellatrice does make a really nice hand-tied cap. And with their hand-tied caps, they have silicone on the ear tabs. They have ear-to-ear -ear lace. Um, and of course, a hand-tied cap. It's a really beautiful wig. And also, if you do find that the 23 inches is just too long, too much hair for you, they also make a Dolce & Dolce 18 inch, which is awesome to have as well. Um, the only thing about the 18 inch is that it does not come in a hand-tied version. Only the 23 inch does. Uh, let me talk about the fit on this. So I run petite. I'm 20.5 inches in circumference, 11 and a half ear to ear, and 11 and a half front to nape. This wig is big on me. Um, I would wear it anyways, just because <laughs> that is what I do. I wear wigs that are too big and I just cinch them in at the nape where the adjusters are. And I just deal with any bulkiness in the back. But this wig in particular, along with a lot of Bellatress wigs, they generally run a little bit larger than average. And this one is no exception. So it does run larger than average. This would be best suited for average to average large um, and could fit up to a large cap, I'd say around 23 inches. So if you are a petite like me, you might not enjoy the fit of this. Um, but like I said, I tend to deal with the bulk in the back and just adjust the circumference and I just deal with it. All right, since I'm here with you, I will show you what Sangria looks like on. Um, this color, ugh, it might be one of my new favorite colors. I love it. I do, I do. All right, I'm gonna part this one over to the left, see what that looks like. Um, and just putting this one on, the fit feels just like the other one. It seems to be very consistent with um, all of the wigs that I have tried or all of the Dolce & Dolce 23s that I've tried. Um, I'll give you a glance here from the... So again, this is easy for me to pull back because this wig is a bit big for me. I need to tighten those adjusters. Um, so here is that transition from the lace front into the wefting here. Um, so again, that's something that sometimes bothers me. So just thought I'd show you guys as well. But I do find um, the density for their lace fronts is pretty good. Sometimes uh, lace fronts tend to run a little bit thick and dense in the front, which makes it hard to pull back and off your face. But I do find that this lace front is generally pretty realistic and natural. So again, if you are interested in learning a little bit more about Sangria, the color, and Tres Leches Blonde, go back and check out my video on six Bellatress colors and you can learn a little bit more there. So I think that is about all I have to share with you about this wig. I, t I sometimes tend to ramble and ramble, so I'm just gonna cut myself off before I do. But if this is a wig you are interested in, then make sure you go check it out at chiquelle.com, chiquelle.ca if you're in Canada, or chiquelle.com.au if you're in Australia. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm so happy to have you guys here with me and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you.